Redline logbook here, and this is Don Machi Dungeon Survival Guide, Chapter 3, The Lower Floors. The lower floors make up floors 25 to 36, and what we know about them is very little, because the guild actively will not give you information on it until your familia has the battle capacity to actually enter the lower floors, or deeper. And the reason for this is because they don't want people stupid enough to just try and just end up dead. Because of this, the lower floors are referred to as the New World. The fact is, it is just a rare sight that very few in the world have ever get to see. The first section are floors 25 to 27, Water City. These three floors are completely connected to one another where the monsters are able to freely swim up and down all the rivers that exist throughout these three floors. Main reason is because the Great Falls are here. The Great Falls start on floor 25 and descend over 100 meters to this 27th floor. Originally, all this water would flow out into uh, the seas, but after the defeat of the Leviathan by Zeus and Hera Familia, they sealed off the exit. So where all this water goes, no one actually knows. It could go somewhere deeper in the dungeon, or it has another exit that leads out to the ocean. We just don't know. But it's believed to go somewhere because, well, the place isn't overflowing with water. What you'll find here are equestrian monsters, monsters that are able to walk on land and on the water, and for the most part, just coral, pearls, and all kinds of valuables that you would find in the ocean are here. It's recommended that you be a level 3 adventurer to enter this region. Level 2s can survive here, but for the most part, most level 2s will basically die if they're by themselves, because all the monsters here are almost on par with them. It's also recommended that you wear Undine Cloth. Undine Cloth is, of course, a blue robe created by a water spirit, the Undines. The reason for this is because it allows you to swim better. It, uh, it basically, it's a, like a flotation device. With that being said, never, never enter the water <laughs> in the water world. You will die, because no matter how much faster the Undine Cloth lets you swim, you will never swim faster than the monsters that live in these waters. You will die, never. Never enter the water. And if you have to enter the water to, to grab a valuable pearl or coral in the shallow end, stay in the shallow end and make sure to be always on guard with people on land because you will die. And this should be obvious by now, but you should at least have a party of four. Located on the 25th floor, you will meet the drag octopus, which is basically a giant octopus monster. For the most part, it just grabs you, drags you under, and then of course kills you. So once again, be wary of the water. Also located on the 25th floor are raider fish. These guys, once again, very aquatic based. They don't come on the land, so just stay away from the water and you should be fine. They are about two to three meters long though, so if you do have to go in the water, they're gonna be a big threat. Also located on the 25th floor are carbuncles. Uh, these are cat monsters with a jewel in their head. They're actually extremely rare and the odds of seeing them on are basically impossible. If you do end up killing uh, one, the mystic crystal in its head is a drop item that is very valuable. Located on floors 25 and 26 are harpies. Harpies are bird women with powerful talons on their feet. What they do is they swoop down and rip you apart. They'll even grab you, fly you up, and drop you to your death. So there's a high possibility that if it gets you and you don't kill it before, or at least forced to let go of you before it flies up high enough, it will drop you off a cliff. They also like to fight alongside sirens, who are also located on floors 25 and 26. The sirens usually keep themselves at a distance and blast you with sonic waves which disorient you and basically could even rupture your eardrums. These two groups of bird women basically work together to kill whoever they can. It's always recommended to take out the sirens first so that you can avoid their screech weapon. On floors 26 to 27, you'll find the blue crabs. These are really the first aquatic monsters that are actually able to come on land. They'll probably meet basically their giant blue crabs. And they're all on the lower end of a level 2. Once again, level 2s will have a hard time fighting these guys. They'll beat them, and they'll probably even beat a group of them, but if you're a strong enough level 2, that is. But once again, level 2s really shouldn't be on this place. A common drop item is our shell. Another monster that's able to go in the water or land are the aqua serpents. They're 10 meter long restrictor snakes, which means they're not venomous, but they will wrap you up and squeeze the life out of you. And when you're underwater and you're being squeezed, you're basically dead. A common drop item are their fins. Oh, our first trap monster in a while, the crystal turtle. Yeah, the reason why the crystal turtle is a trap monster is because it resembles the ground when it's hiding in its shell. As a result, it's actually common practice for adventurers to literally attack the ground and smash it up to see in case it might be one of the turtles. So you don't have to constantly be destroying the ground, but every once in a while, just give it a good whack into an area that you first enter. Just smash up everything to see, see if it's a turtle or not. Also located on floors 25 to 27 is the Devil Mosquito. Basically, they're giant mosquito monsters that suck your blood out. They'll latch onto you, stick their needle in you, and just drain you dry. And even if you don't get drained dry, the needle is like 6 inches long, so it's basically a dagger. Also located on floors 25 to 27 are Light Quartz. Light Quartz are giant crystal monsters with an eye in their center that float around 
I don't know how, but they just float around and they shoot a light beam at you from their eye. Now, the best thing you can do with fighting against these guys is just let them fire at you while you're behind cover. And once they are out of power, they have to wait for, to recharge. During that time, you can then destroy them. Located on floors 25 and 26 are the, is the Chrysalis Sea Urchin. These guys are basically giant sea urchin monsters, round balls with spikes with teeth. These guys are extremely dangerous. They take the same role as hard armors do in the upper floors, where they're pretty much impossible to kill in hand-to-hand -hand combat for a level 2 or sometimes even level 3s. The best thing you can do is dodge it while it's uh, coming at you and hit it with magic at long range. Yggdrasil, located on floors 25 to 27, is a red bird that is able to move at super speed. Now these things are suicide bombers. They will fly at you at high speeds with their sharp beaks and try to gouge out your organs. And they will keep going. Even if they miss you, they will continue to accelerate, crash into the rock grounds, break their necks, and die. They have no problem committing suicide charges, and they will keep charging you until every single one is dead. They are so fast that most even level 3s can't keep up with them, so it is recommended to drop all of your equipment and run away. And if you can get your stuff back later, that's great. If you can't, well, you should just leave the lower floors because you're screwed. The fact is, they're not the strongest, but when it comes to that having that level of speed, it doesn't matter. You just can't win if you can't keep up. A common drop item is their wing. Located on floors 25 is the mermaid. Mermaids are one of the magic using monsters out there. What they'll do is they'll sing a song that hypnotizes you and it will basically guide you into the water where you'll either drown yourself or more likely be ripped apart by other monsters. If you hear the song, it's too late for you. And the problem is that they can get your entire party. So there's a high probability that everyone can get uh, trapped by this and, and just end up dead. They, they are a party killer. As a result of this, as soon as you see a mermaid, plug your ears and then blast it with magic. A common drop item is the mermaid's blood. This stuff is super healing. No matter what, how injured you are, no matter what you've been poisoned by, it doesn't matter. A single drop of a mermaid's blood can cure you completely. It can save you from everything but death. It can even restore stamina and mind so you can use magic again. On floors 26 and 27, you'll encounter the mermen. The mermen are humanoid fish monsters that can go on both sea and land, and they resemble the creature from the Black Lagoon, is the best way to describe it. These guys hunt in packs, where they actively will swarm you and rip you apart. They also fight using coral landforms, which take the shape of clubs, swords, spears, and tridents, so they act as an actual unit army fighting you with weapons. Now the best way to fight against them is to kill their leader. Every merman group has a merman leader. You can tell who it is because he's a different color than the rest. Once you kill him, the rest become disoriented and it's like their IQ drops dramatically. At that point they go from a pack of warriors to a pack of wild animals. Once you hit floor 27, certain monsters start to spawn that are as strong as the top tier of a level 2. Basically, a level 2 adventure, this is their limit. One of these monsters that can fight toe to toe with the top level 2 are the Kelpies. Kelpies are horses that have blue-green skin and are basically both aquatic and land-based. Their power is without a doubt unrivaled compared with all the other monsters on the 27th floor. Best way to fight them is to be a level 3 or higher. Another one of these powerful monsters that spawn on the 27th floor are Aphalak. These guys are, no joke, beaver gators. A hybrid between a beaver and a gator. As such, they are both aquatic and land based as well. So once again, they are going to be a hassle to deal with. Another one of these powerful monsters is the Dorora. These guys are elephant seal monsters. That's literally all they are. It's a giant elephant seal monster. Both aquatic and land based, but still they have the power to back it up as a monster that spawns solely on level 27. Another powerful monster that spawns on level 27 are the Lamias. These are similar to the Lamias that are on, floor, on the middle floors, but these guys are much stronger. Well, ladies, technically. Once again, there's something that a level 2 cannot fight. Well, they can, but it'll be an even match and there's a chance that you could lose it. But I would say the deadliest monster that comes out of floor 27 are the Voldemira. These are black, one-eyed fish that are able to float and swim through the air. They have a hard shell body that's able to crush you as they rip you apart with their teeth. And once again, they basically fly. So taking them on is almost impossible as they swarm you in a giant wave. And that's really their entire battle tactic, is to overwhelm you with numbers. Best way to fight them is either you have massive numbers, or blast them with as much magic as possible to kill as many as possible. And finally, spawning on floor 27, but it can travel between all three floors, is the Asasvina. This is a two-headed water dragon. Well, it is a water dragon, it doesn't actually have a water breath weapon. No, instead it is a two-headed dragon that is able to swim through the water gracefully and easily as if it were nothing. And it has actually 
two breath attacks, one for each head. One does fires off a napalm, which is a blue flame that's able to burn even on the water, and the other is a steam that is able to catch out all types of magic. Its power is classified as a level 5 monster, but its danger rating is considered a level 6, because if you fight it on the water, you're basically screwed. Once again, it is a masterful swimmer, and you basically have no footing when dealing with the water. And just like all monster wreck monsters, it is able to call out for help for support from all the weaker monsters that exist. You aren't fighting this thing by itself. You have to fight all of its little minions as well. The recommended way how to fight it is such. One, you find a single room with only one way in and out. You destroy the entire of the walls, the floors, and the ceiling of this room. So this way monsters cannot span. The dungeon has to rely on healing itself before it can start spawning monsters in that area. Then, while you're in this destroyed room, you then lure the Asafina into that room. So this way it can't use the water as a weapon on solid land. There's no water in this room. You then gang up on it. Then you gang up on it as a party of about 30 or more level 3 adventures. Recommended to have at least one or two level 4 hires as well. This is the smartest and right way to fight the monster. Because if you fight it in the water, it will have all the advantages and it will have all the allies that it can possibly call from the water. Not just that, but if you push it into a corner, it will enact its basically its ultimate move, which is to run up the waterfall and do a belly flop back down. And if you survive the belly flop, this will create a massive wave that is so powerful that it can smash the rock walls of the floor you're on. And it's not like it's going to give you a chance to recover after that. It will then immediately go back to blasting you with his napalm. So yeah, find a room and gang up on it. That's the best way to fight it. Floor 28 is actually another safe zone. What it looks like, what it's about, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, there is really no data on it. After that, you have the final 29 through 36 floors for the lower floors. All we know is that floors 29 and 30 are referred to as the dense forest region, which is basically a jungle inside the dungeon. It resembles that of a uh, rainforest. One of the monsters you'll find on floor 30 would be the blood source, which is basically a T-Rex. The reason why it's called a blood source because it's bright red. Oh yeah, and once you get to the dense forest region, no level two can survive here. You have no chance. The monsters here are basically level, t high level twos and level threes. And the rest of the lower floors, we know nothing about. We don't know if they continue on as the dense forest region or if they change completely to something else. It's unclear, it's unknown. And that is the end of chapter three. Next is chapter four, the deep floors. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, give a thumbs up so you can enjoy more Dalmachi and other anime things. Thank you and have a great day.